Big East Shootaround is live from New York City with a huge lineup. Big East Hoops fans, glad that you are with us. John Fanta with you. And here's what we have coming up on an absolutely loaded show. Yeah, I know that the pigskin starts tonight, but Big East Hoops never stops. We've got Xavier head coach Travis Steele leading us off. Fox insider Evan Daniels will talk about the new men on campus, the freshmen across the Big East, and we've got some coaching storylines and even DePaul's Max Struess. But we begin with the newest addition to the Big East Hoops coaching family. What is Travis Steele's vision for Xavier? Here you go, Musketeer fans. It is a pleasure to be joined by Xavier men's basketball head coach Travis Steele. Coach, thanks so much for taking some time to be with us. I wanted to start with Greg Christopher. When he introduced you a couple of months back, he said, we had a lot of people show interest for this job, and that speaks to Xavier men's basketball. But we went with someone that we've come to love. What's your love for Xavier? and How would you define what the university's been towards you in the 10 years leading up to becoming the head coach? You know, Xavier's a special place. You know, even way back before I even got here, John, uh, you know, I brought several kids back when my brother used to be an assistant coach here at Xavier, um, back during the Thad Mata era. Um, I'd bring players over for visits, and, and I'd have a chance to sit down with Sister Roseanne Fleming, who's the academic advisor. And that was the one promise Xavier always made was, hey, you're going to be able to get a degree. And uh, we've graduated 109 straight seniors. It dates all the way back to 1986. You know, obviously – We've had a lot of success basketball-wise as well. And you know, being here the last 10 years, you fall in love with it even more. You know, Xavier's about the people. Uh, we have great leadership you know, with Greg Christopher and with Father Graham, who's our president of our university, and just all the other coaches around here. It's a very, very tight-knit family uh, where we all look out for each other. What's the difference, would you say, that you add as the head coach of this program? Obviously, you want to continue the success, but what does – Travis Steele bring to the head coaching role? You know, I'm going to be my own guy. You know, I think, you know, I've actually coached with and for the last three head coaches here at Xavier, whether it was Thad Mata, Sean Miller, and Chris Mack. And I think the uh, the overall theme is going to be very similar. Um, our system, our terminology is going to be very similar. I'm going to have my own personality, though. I'm just, I'm a little different than those guys. And I think players can always, they, they appreciate authenticity, right? And, uh, I'm going to be my own guy. I'm going to show them I love them. I'm going to be invested in those guys every single day off the floor, academically and on the floor, and keep on pushing those guys to be great. How do you channel that authenticity in constructing your staff? You know, I always say, like, putting your staff is probably the most important thing you can do as a head coach. And, you know, I've been very, very fortunate to hire some terrific guys. You know, it's like putting a piece of uh, – putting a puzzle together, though. The pieces have to fit, whether it's the personalities – whether it's uh, what position groups that they've had a lot of experience with, um, what do they bring to the table on the floor coaching-wise during practice and recruiting areas. And you know, I've been really fortunate to hire um, two guys that actually worked at their alma maters and Jonas Hayes and Ben Johnson. And both guys bring great experience at this level, coaching and playing. Um, you know, they, They're also terrific coaches as well, and I think they're both going to be terrific head coaches. And then also bringing back Dante Jackson, who is a former player here at Xavier. I coached him for during his sophomore, junior, and senior years. Um, for a guy that's really, really passionate about this place, a guy that understands our system and our terminology, I think we have a terrific staff. Coach, you say putting a puzzle together. I, I think of it as like putting five-way chili together in a way. Hey, you know what? I like that, John. It's really, I, you know what? I'm more of a three-way guy. Okay. I'm not a five-way guy. But you know what? Skyline chili can't get any better than that. Preseason trip may be in store when I come out to Cincy. You know what? I'll take you. On me. <laughs> Let's turn to your team. And a lot of fans are curious to know, and I know that these guys are going to be very important for the upcoming year. How will the grad transfers assimilate to this season, and what are your expectations for them? You know, I think they got, they're obviously going to be a big part of our team. And you know, I think all three guys, number one, bring great character. They bring a guy, obviously, experience at this level. You know, maybe a different level, but in Division One college basketball, being coached, the expectations, the accountability. Um, I, I expect all three big things. You know, they're going to bring different things. You know, Zach Hankins is a guy 
obviously D2 National Player of the Year. They won the national title at Ferris State. Um, he is an elite defender. He is six foot ten, six foot eleven. He's long. He's athletic. Uh, he, he impacts a lot of shots around the rim with his length. Um, he's also a guy you can throw the ball to on the block and say score. So I think he's going to be really important for us. Um, obviously Ryan Wellich, you know, he averaged like 18 a game at San Jose State. Can really shoot the ball. Shot 44 percent from three. Um, losing JP and Trayvon and Kaiser, who did a lot of our shooting last year from the perimeter. Ryan will help us in that area, I think, in a big way. And then Kyle Castlin's actually, he's been a really pleasant surprise, John. Like he's, number one, he's a tremendous leader. Um, but he's a guy that impacts the game on both ends of the floor, a lot like Malcolm Bernard did for us a couple years ago. I think he's going to be in that, that type of player for us. That said, with what you had last year, could you be deeper this upcoming season with the amount of options you're talking about? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that's to me to, to be seen, you know, in practice. You know, I always say playing time's earned in practice. No matter who you are, um, it has to be earned. So I, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm excited about who we have. We have 10, we actually have 10 scholarship players. We actually, the 11th, we actually put a walk on Leighton Strand on scholarship. Uh, so we don't have as maybe as many scholarship guys, but I do like the depth of our team though this year. Turning to the returnees, I'll start with the backcourt. Uh, how do you envision things between Quinton Gooden and Paul Scruggs in terms of who will be carrying the ball off the floor for the majority of the way? You know, I think the way we play, John, I think it's a very versatile system. So I think you're going to see multiple guys bringing it up. Maybe not even just Paul and Q. It could be Najee Marshall. Um, it could be Ryan Wellich. It could be Kyle Kasten. Um, but, you know, I think both those guys obviously have a lot of experience. Q started every game last year started towards the end of his freshman year. Um, I'd expect big things out of him. I think he's the leading uh, returning assist guy in the Big East, and uh, we expect him to be that guy as well this year. I think you can see a guy that maybe can score the ball even more than he did last year and will have to for our team. But make no mistake about it, he's got to lead the Big East in assist and assist to turnover ratio. Then you got a guy like Scruggs who, quite honestly, John, I thought at the beginning of the year he struggled a little bit, and then towards the end of the year, he became one of our top players. You know, he improved as much as any player um, that I've seen here at Xavier during the season, um, going from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. I thought he, he, he made huge jumps, and I expect him to be another guy who can score the ball. He's got to play make for us, and the ball's going to be in his hands a lot. You ever see The Dark Knight Rises? You ever see one of the Dark Knight movies? I have. I have. So I've been hearing the past couple weeks from folks around the program about Tyreek Jones and this transformation. All I can think of is Batman being like in the cave, just working his tail off for months and months. Is that what we're looking at here? Because I was told if I went up to Tyreek Jones right now or I went up to your team, I would have trouble actually recognizing who he is. That's the kind of transformation he's taken. Yeah, he's, he's worked really hard his body. You know, the first thing when, he's, when I got that, when I was named head coach, I met with each guy. And I just gave them goals. You know, Tyreek weighed about 260 pounds last year. And, uh, you know, Tyreek's never going to have a problem with ever being – not having enough strength. And he's a big ball of muscle. And it uh, looks like he's been lifting since he was two years old. Um, so, you know, our goal was him to get, you know, get down to 235. And he's almost there. He's working hard on it every single day. Um, he's a lot leaner. He's quicker. He's going to be able to play a lot more minutes, longer minutes be more explosive around the rim. The game is about quickness nowadays, not necessarily about strength. And uh, he hasn't really lost any of his strength, even though he's lost a lot of weight and become leaner. You know, his goal, and he knows this, is to lead the Big East in rebounding. Um, and I think that's doable for him. Another question. This is my personal favorite. Uh, what are your thoughts on graders? And is graders used in the recruiting process at all? It is, John. <laughs> it's advantage Xavier. So I, you know, I love strawberry chip. That's my favorite. And it's seasonal, John. So you got to come here during the summer to get that. Uh, obviously, you can't go wrong with black raspberry chip as well. I actually live about two blocks away from Graders. I have a little five-year-old boy named Winston. I use my son as an excuse to go there all the time when it's really for me. <laughs> Winston is a very important player in this. He is. <laughs> he is. He uh, is. Before we wrap it up here, your message to Xavier fans uh, with the vision of this program for the upcoming year and the future. You know, we're going to make you proud with how hard we play, the toughness that we play with, the togetherness that we play with. Um, you know, we're, we're going to make our fan base really proud. And again, you know, we, we just want to get better every 
single day. Now, that's what our program is committed to, uh, whether it's in the recruitment process of kids or whether it's the day-to-day work that we do here as a team, conditioning, lifting, uh, skill work. You know, we're working really, really hard to make you guys proud. Nothing like a Saturday afternoon at the Cintas Center, is there? No, nothing like it. Nothing like it. Travis Steele. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, John. Here's what stands out to me about Travis Steele. He's a musketeer through and through, has been there a full decade now before taking over as head coach. And I remember talking to to some people around Xavier when he was named head coach. A couple of the managers told me Travis made sure that when he got the job, he shook everybody's hands throughout the building, went up to everybody. He's that kind of down-to-earth guy. That's exactly why Chris Mack said Travis Steele is ready to lead this program back when Mack got Big East Coach of the Year last March. And the Musketeers, they have a continued success rate that speaks for itself, and that's why Steele is the man for the job in Cincinnati. And that's where we start with coaching storylines. The Musketeers are going to have to have those sophomores, Najee Marshall and Paul Scruggs, take the next step. They're looking for Tyreek Jones to play a new way, but I really look for Scruggs and Quinn Gooden to orchestrate what the Musketeers do in the backcourt. Najee Marshall can be an all-Big East first-team talent, folks. Don't hesitate on that one. I really love Marshall, and I like Scruggs a lot. Gooden equals stability. Watch out for the Musketeers. For number two, it's year two of Patrick Ewing. Jesse Govan's a star. We know what he can do. He can stretch the floor well. He's a tough matchup for any defense. But for Georgetown, it is generating that ball movement. They need James Akinjo and Mac McClung to make immediate impacts as freshmen. There will be a lot on those guys' shoulders to make an impact for the Hoyas backcourt. Number three, we go out to South Orange. Kevin Willard has done an outstanding job with Seton Hall. The Pirates have gone to three straight NCAA tournaments for only the second time in program history, and now they're looking for Miles Powell to be the star, and he's got that type of game. Syracuse transfer Torian Thompson is the key to taking over for what Angel Delgado leaves. That is going to be the key determinant for the Hall. At number four, it's year four for Chris Mullen and St. John's, and the Red Storm really are looking to have a big year. They've got Ponce, Clark, and Simon back. But now, can Mustafa Heron, the Auburn transfer, be eligible? And can the Red Storm find a way to make the right decisions down the stretch in games? They can defend. They were one of the best defensive teams in a loaded Big East of offense last season. Now it's about making smart decisions, executing late in the game, and for Pons, Simon, and Clark to mesh and make this happen for consistency in conference play. And finally, nobody's got a bigger year, in my humble opinion, than the Marquette Golden Eagles because all the pieces have aligned. Steve Wojciechowski told me early in his tenure that, look, you got to get old in this conference, and right now we're young. Now the Golden Eagles are old. Marcus Howard, Sam Hauser, impact transfers, a good freshman class. We're going to hear about them in a moment. That's what the Golden Eagles have. We continue our player spotlights with the Struess. Max Struess of DePaul. He was really good last year for the Blue Demons. Only player in the Big East to be in the top 15 in points, rebounds, and assists. I mean, he, he did it all. Struess has a really good range. He's got a unique offensive skill set and at the wing, tough matchup. Now for him to take the next step, it's really about efficiency, but NBA scouts like this guy. Dave Lado raved about him to me last fall and I expect Max Struess and Eli Kane to pair up for a good year as DePaul looks to take the next step. Struess is the kind of playmaker that can do it, folks. You're watching him here. Think about that step back. Boom, catch and shoot. Hot and ready. He's got it. That's what Max Struess brings to the Blue Demons. And this is a guy with a lot of passion for this program to get to the next step. His story's awesome, okay? Juco transfer that now has delivered and can be an all Big East type talent this upcoming year. We shall see as Struess and Kane lead the way 
for the Blue Demons. So you know about the returnees. We've highlighted them in our player spotlights. But what about the new men on campus? Let's break down the freshman class with Fox Insider Evan Daniels. We're now joined by Fox College Basketball Insider and the host of the Sidelines podcast. It's Evan Daniels. And Evan, with everybody getting back to school, back into the swing of things, there's new men on campus. We're talking about the freshman class across Big East hoops. So I start with, who's your all Big East freshman team heading into this year? There are, there are some really good options here, John, and uh, I've narrowed it down to, to a, a group. I think we'll start with Javon Quinterly over at Villanova. I'm expecting him uh, to have a big season, and he obviously has uh, big shoes to fill, uh, but I think Javon Quinterly uh, will arguably be uh, the best incoming freshman. Uh, they slide over to Providence. I, I chose David Duke and A.J. Reeves. I think both of those guys have a chance to make a pretty big impact over at Providence. Uh, Joey Hauser at Marquette, a guy that not many people have really been talking about too much because he actually got to campus uh, at the semester break, uh, but redshirt and didn't play. And then Sam Frawling at Creighton, I think he's got a chance to uh, to be pretty impactful at Creighton. So those are the five, Javon Quinterly, uh, David Duke, A.J. Reeves, Joey Hauser, and Sam Frawling. Just staying on Frawling a little bit, what does he bring to the Blue Jays? Well, he brings size. This is a kid that, that's pushing uh, six foot 11, seven feet tall. He's got a, a pretty impressive set of mitts. He's got nice touch around the basket. This is a kid that's had a lot of success in international play, playing uh, for Australia. Um, the brother of Harry Frawling, who, who was uh, briefly at Marquette yeah. and SMU, and now he's playing uh, international basketball. But uh, I, I think Sam brings size. He brings offensive potential. Uh, offensive versatility. He can step out on the floor and make a jump shot. You can throw it to him on the block and he can score. Um, and, and this is a guy that also rebounds his area. So I, I think Sam Frawling is going to um, be pretty impactful there, Creighton. It'll be interesting to see the Jays losing Marcus Foster and Kyrie Thomas, two backcourt stars, but they have Frawling, they have Epperson, Crumple. Could be a new way that they play a little bit bigger. But as we continue on with this freshman class, we talked about your top five. Who might people be sleeping on? Uh, as a class or as a player? As a class. I, I think as a class, John, uh, maybe the, the, the team is Marquette. Uh, I think there's some good options. You could go with St. John's probably, but I, I'm going to go with Marquette. And the reason I am, uh, I mentioned Joey Hauser. This is a guy that's a, a former top 40 top pro type prospect. Really good size at 6'8". He's versatile in the sense that you can play him at the three because uh, he can step out on the floor and shoot it. You can play him some as a small ball four. But the guy that really everyone's forgetting about is Brendan Bailey. This is a kid that went on a, a Mormon mission. Uh, he's going to be available for Marquette this coming season. And this is a kid coming out of high school that I, I really like, John. I, I thought he had a versatile scoring package. He had very good size for a perimeter player. And by all accounts, uh, from talking to, to the Marquette staff, uh, this is going to be a guy that's hard to keep off the floor because of that ability to score. So uh, I think when you couple the fact that uh, I think a lot of people don't know a lot about Brendan Bailey, and this is a former top 100 prospect, and then a guy in Joe, Joey Hauser that's a, a former top 40 prospect, I think those are two really good players that could help Marquette, and they should be a pretty good basketball team this year. A lot of fans love to think about NBA potential. Who in this freshman class has that type of potential? I'd probably go with Javon Quinterly. Um, maybe not the physical gifts that a guy like uh, A.J. Reeves has, who I think is a really good prospect. That's the 6'6 the six, six wing that's going to, to Providence with the, the long arms and the explosive athleticism. But I'm going to go with Quinterly. Uh, and it starts with, with his feel for the game, uh, his uh, ability to set guys up. Um, his ability to get in the paint and distribute, but he can also score. He has a really good blend, John, of, of being able to score the basketball, but also uh, distributing for others. He's the highest ranked prospect heading in to the Big East Conference this year. Uh, I think he has big shoes to fill, but I, I think he's a guy that uh, is confident enough to step in at Villanova, handle that point guard position, uh, and handle it well. And I, I don't think that he's this big-time NBA prospect, but I think he's got a chance to play in the, the NBA for quite some time because of that feel and that blend of facilitating and passing. I, I want to turn to a story that actually you broke a couple of months ago. I mean, we have to go back a little ways, but people around DePaul are excited about Flynn Cameron and think that the Blue Demons 
actually have the talent, the depth to maybe make a move and get a couple spots up in the Big East this upcoming year. What does Flynn bring to the Blue Demons? Well, what I've liked about Flynn uh, is really his feel for the game. He's a bigger point guard, John. He, he's strong. Uh, he can handle contact, but you can put the ball in his hands. He's got good vision. He takes care of the basketball. He makes good decisions uh, with the basketball, but then he can also make a jump shot. And this is a kid that uh, DePaul uh, recruited pretty heavily. He's an international prospect, played for New Zealand uh, in some FIBA competition. He's got good genes. His um, family, dad was a basketball mm -hmm. player. I mean, this is a kid that, uh, that I just think thinks the game properly, uh, makes really good decisions, and uh, I think he's a guy that – uh, it was good for them to be able to get him in at semester break, get him in the, the system, get him uh, learning uh, from from uh, other college players, college coaches, and getting in that college weight room. I think that is um, a big deal for a lot of kids, and, and, and doing that in red shirting um, I, I think will help him tremendously. Who besides Villanova is set up the best for long-term success in the future? Well, I think you could go a couple different – uh, routes here. We obviously, John, just talked about uh, Xavier and, and the ability uh, to recruit and how Travis Steele ha has really set them up with some good recruiting classes starting in 19 and already getting a player in 2020. Uh, but I really like what Ed Cooley's doing at Providence. Um, back to back to back, really good recruiting classes. Obviously got Makai Ashton Langford last year. This year he brings in some studs and David Duke and A.J. Reeves, both top 50 prospects. Uh, I think Ed Cooley, not only known um, for being a really good basketball coach with a, a big personality. But uh, he's really doing a good job of recruiting in the Northeast. Uh, he, he's recruiting uh, guys that fit the way he plays. And he's recruiting really talented kids. I think David Duke and A.J. Reeves are both uh, big-time talents. They're going to boost that perimeter, already talented one. Uh, so I, I think uh, Xavier and Providence, those are two schools you could certainly point to and say, man, they're, they're really set up for some long-term success. Providence would like something to say with Duke and Reeves. There's a lot of hype around them, but when it's all said and done right here, we won't hold you to it because it's still only August. Your Big East preseason freshman of the year is? Javon Quinterly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Javon Quinterly. I, I think I made it pretty, pretty clear how much I, I think of him as a player, as a prospect. Um, and obviously there's a, a big opportunity for him to step in and, and fill a void. Uh, and I think he's uh, ready to answer that call. It's not going to be to the level, uh, nor should it be, uh, of a Jalen Brunson uh, by the time he leaves Villanova. Uh, but as a freshman, I think Javon Quinterly is ready to answer the call and step in and um, have a big role for that Villanova basketball team. Evan, before we let you go, tell all our followers where they can find all your great work. I appreciate that, John. Yeah, you can check out my podcast, uh, The Sidelines with Evan Daniels, uh, on the Apple Podcast Network or your favorite podcast app uh, during the season on the Inside the Big East show over on uh, FS1 and then uh, college basketball recruiting over at 24-7 Sports. So uh, you can find me in all those places. Evan Daniels, he's got it all across Big East tubes for Fox Sports. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, John, thanks for having me, man. Great stuff from Evan, as always. I know we got a question from a Butler fan just now about how their freshman class matches up with everybody's. And what I would say is that Laval Jordan would like to ease those guys in. He is looking for Jordan Tucker, the Duke transfer, to make an impact at that semester break. It sounds like that Tucker will be available for the, the Crosstown, uh, big, the Crossroads Classic, rather, in Indianapolis when Butler takes on. Langford and Indiana so it sounds like Tucker will be made available then keep in mind that they recruited him got him to come from Duke but this Butler team is going to be Kamar Baldwin driven Aaron Thompson Paul Jorgensen will compliment him down low that's the concern that they'll need to address but they have Brunken Fowler back and that's what the dogs are going to look like for the upcoming year thanks for the question we've had a lot of good comments today I see you Blue Demons fans I see you you have been everywhere throughout this show. You love Max Struess, and thanks to the DePaul fans for watching. I've got, I've got the names. I have to talk to my producers for a moment. What are our names again that I have to shout out? DJ Buckets 4 is one. BC Gets Buckets is another. And a Golden Eagles fan uh, has jumped into the conversation as well. That's what I love to see here. 
in August as Labor Day weekend is upon us. These guys are back on campus. And folks, you got to remember, the season starts this year, November 6th. So two months from next week, we're going to be playing hoops again. How exciting is that? Get out to the grill, barbecue, enjoy your Labor Day weekend. We're back with you next Thursday at 1 Eastern time. And for those wondering, the schedule is still being worked out. Stay tuned because they're working hard. Thanks for watching Shoot Around.